Hi, I'm Rachel, and believe it or not, this is my first AM reading video of the month. <laughs> I was not expecting to make this video so late in the month, at least not the first one, but uh, what do you know, things turned out as they turned out. And actually, I have been talking about my December reads um, in other videos. I talked about uh, Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth in a video about Goodreads ratings, and I talked about the two short story collections that I finished during Hanukkah in my Hanukkah short stories video, so I'll link both of those down below. So I figured I'd cover a handful more books uh, that I've been reading and hope to get to soon. The first thing that I finished uh, this week is an audiobook of um, The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. It is the third and final novel in her Broken Earth trilogy. And oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this. I think I, I find it all so overwhelming in the best way possible. Uh, the trilogy centers in a far, far future, uh, if it's our Earth anyway, and I think it is, but it's a far, it's, it's, it's a very different Earth, where what's left of humanity is completely traumatized by continual uh, seismic events. <laughs> and uh, the, the worst of these are what's called seasons, which are extinction level, and uh, the one that we're in at the very beginning is the fifth season of recorded history, and uh, that was the name of the first book. And um, so Jemison highlights how people survive or don't survive and how sort of community life or calm life has uh, grown up around that. But there are main characters. They are people called Origines. They have uh, become imbued with uh, powers that uh, can, can quell the Earth's damage as it comes, a very useful tool in this, uh, in this world. Um, and uh, two of the Origines, a mother and a daughter, actually get caught up in something about uh, trying to end the seasons forever. And I mean, the way that it sounds like that, it sounds like some sort of superhero novel, but everything is a lot more nuanced and layered and complex. I mean, the world building is just astounding. I think I was lacking a little bit by listening to it rather than reading it. I mean, I hear that in the printed books there are huge amounts of appendices and uh, it's just such an overwhelming amount of information, but uh, at the same time, I feel like this is sort of uh, begging to be an oral storytelling tradition. This is very much about sort of the journeys of a hero of, our, of this age. <laughs> and the way that the story is told is so unique. There's a lot of uh, first person, second person, and third person. And this, uh, this final book uh, draws together the context of uh, where and why the story is being told the way it is, but it's very much a story that is just propulsive in, in, in its narrative, and it's just imbued with so much emotion, and uh, Robin Miles, the narrator, was amazing, so I just, I felt like I was enthralled to her. I mean, even in this book, there's a cast of people called the Lorists who go around telling stories, so it really fits, and uh, I just felt like I was in front of a campfire with some bard in front of me, and uh, and that part was really amazing. And uh, all of it, I just think it was all very amazing. There was a lot of dramatic stuff that happened, but none of it was out of the blue because the world building was just to the nth degree, and Jemison's understanding of geology and how she explained everything was just so amazing. I mean, just, it's just, it was just amazing, amazing, amazing. And I'm not even touching upon the fact of the human conflicts, the human dramas, and uh, Jemison's focus on, on prejudice and how she probes the idea of subjugation and bigotry and how and why it becomes systematic in, in, in any culture. And uh, every book just had layers and layers of more stuff on it. And so earlier this year, I read two other science fiction fantasy uh, first novels of series that I think are being lauded for amazing world building. Uh, with Malka Older's uh, Infomocracy, she uh, goes deep into the idea of micro-democracies. And then with Ada Palmer's To Like the Lightning, she imagines a world that has uh, recreated itself uh, largely based on the ideas of 18th uh, century enlightenment. <laughs> and uh, I know those are being lauded a lot, uh, but for me, N.K. Jemisin's The Broken Earth series had just as much world building, just as much, if not more, layers upon layers of understanding about how the Earth and how society would be the same and yet different, and how they would survive all of this 
cataclysmic <laughs> assault from the earth. But hers also had what I think those two were lacking personally, which is a visceral human heart and characters who I really just could dive deep into. It just uh, checked all the boxes, as it were. It was an incredible feat of speculative fiction. Next, I'm uh, in the middle of this book with its uh, nice uh, interlibrary loan cover on it. Uh, this is The Waiting Room by Leah Kaminsky. It is uh, one of the uh, 2016 releases of Jewish fiction that uh, I wanted to get to this year. It centers around this woman who is an Australian immigrant, uh, married to an Israeli, has a young son. She works as a doctor. She is the child of Holocaust survivors and is very haunted by their trauma, which they instilled into her. And uh, it takes place all in one day um, in Haifa when there's a, 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 a homicide bombing that happens within the, the course of the day. And uh, we follow Dina throughout the day as she's seeing her patients and otherwise dealing with her own issues. And I find it very powerful in how it deals with uh, all of these human emotions about uh, post-traumatic stress and uh, the two big uh, non-religious uh, themes of uh, Jewish life, which is Israel and the Holocaust, and uh, how they uh, can entwine and not. Uh, I think my only quibble, I guess, is how stuffed it is, and uh, to put, make all of this happen within 24 hours, uh, Dina, the main character, is dealing constantly with the ghost of her mother while she's trying to see patients and running away from patients, and we're getting to know them a little bit as well, and then she's uh, doing errands at the Shook, and she's worried about her marriage, and it's just all happening very fast, all very condensed, and, and I guess that to me is, is a little exhausting and even a little questionable that someone could hold on to her sanity. <laughs> Although I guess it is just one day, maybe she's not this crazy every day, and the themes and the character development and the writing are all really, really on par, and uh, I'm really enjoying this. And from there, I have one final book on my list of uh, 2016 uh, Jewish releases that I wanted to get to. I hold this, I think, uh, recently. This is Questioning Return by Beth Kisilev, which also takes place in Israel and also deals with the experience of uh, diaspora Jews in Israel. This is about uh, American Jews who become religious and how they interact with Israel. And so I'm also very much looking forward to this one. I think this is one, that, one of the ones on my list that I've been looking forward to the most. So I'm not very good at reading front list books, so uh, one of my goals for this year was to get through about uh, 22 uh, 2016 releases so that at the end of the year I can uh, go ahead and make one of those best of posts, but instead of 2017 releases, there'll be 2016 releases. So so once I finish this book, I, I can make my post, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I've loved watching everyone's videos and seeing all the lists, of course, of uh, what people have loved uh, from 2017. But hey, maybe this is a reminder that uh, the recent past can still get some love, too. <laughs> and finally for this video, I will hold up these two novellas. This is Pilgrim by Julie Stielstra, and soon to be a major motion picture by Judith Arcana. Both of these books were published by Minerva Rising Press, which is the press that published my first short story in their literary journal. <laughs> and by the way, speaking of my own short stories, I have a new one coming out early next year, and I will link to a post all about that down below. <laughs> So I had two major reasons for wanting to review novellas. The first, of course, was to support Minerva Rising Press. And uh, the second is to support the idea of reading novellas, because I'm in the middle of writing one. <laughs> and because, why not? Why can't we read uh, different sized pieces of literature? <laughs> so I'm going to hopefully read these relatively quickly, because they're relatively short. And then I will uh, make a video review of both of them. I actually think I'm going to do something crazy and not review these on Goodreads, which... The, th this is unprecedented for me. I'm not, uh, this is... I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll change my mind on this. But I figured, just to prove to myself that I'm not too connected to Goodreads, I can, you know, keep these ones off the list. <laughs> but stay tuned on this channel, because I will definitely uh, talk about my uh, opinions of them. Hoping they're really good. <laughs> So that about covers it for me. So many books and so little time left in the year, but uh, these are some of the ones that I'm hoping to get to and through relatively quickly. 
luckily I have a few days off, so hopefully that'll help. Although I'll also be seeing family and <laughs> trying to be social in that regard. But uh, hope you're all doing well with your reading goals. Thanks so much for stopping by to watch, and I'll see you next time.